Hello truck camper friends, Charlie Cushane here to do another interesting mod to my 2012 Chalet Double Slide. And this happened over the last weekend. We were going away for five days of boondocking. I plugged in my camper, turned the refrigerator on a couple days ahead of time, and it got right down to temperature around 8 degrees in the freezer and about 36, 38 degrees in the refrigerator. Everything was perfect. So off we go, boondocking. got to our boondocking campsite and my wife says, hey, the freezer is now at 18 degrees and the refrigerator is at 60. I said, 60? Oh, something's not right. And of course now it's running, it's a, you know, a propane. So I kept looking at it, looking at it, sure enough, it's the refrigerator was at 60. We tried adjusting the little thing on the inside veins of the refrigerator, did no good. So my wife's getting really panicky and because we're going to lose all our food. So I started looking at what it could possibly be. And this is our propane tanks right here as you see them. Um, they go to our hot water heater right here, to our stove inside, all the way down here to the refrigerator. All right. And I started calling friends, talking to them, and they said, well, maybe it was the last time you cleaned your refrigerator. I said, never. They said, well, you gotta do that, that's your problem. So I took everything apart, opened up the refrigerator, cleaned the little, um, where the propane goes in and the flame comes out, I cleaned all that, blew it all out, I cleaned out that long pipe that goes up and down, the, the flue stack, blew it all out with my air gun, Turn it back on and sure enough, there's still a flame. There's a flame and it looked normal. I took pictures of the flame, sent it to my friend, who's an expert in RVs and propane. And he said, well, the flame looks a little weak. Did you blow out the, the line going there? I said, no, I haven't blown out the line. So that was my next task. I went here and after the regulator, I unplugged the line to blow air through it all the way there, thinking it was some kind of plug. When I took the fitting off the bottom of the regulator, a whole lot of oil came out. And I think that it comes out of the regulator and my camper does it like a U-shape, so it formed like a trap. And that was full. And it was restricting flow of the gas all the way up to my refrigerator. And I also noticed my hot water heater, when I turned it on to take a shower in the morning, the flame didn't sound as aggressive or strong. It usually sounds like a jet. But this time it was not that kind of a, it was a more gentle flame. So that my suspicions were probably correct about that oil was restricting the flow. So I just unhooked the bottom of the, the hose from the bottom of the regulator. Oil dripped out of the regulator. And I held the hose down and tons of oil, I mean, like, all came out. I let it drain for a half an hour, an hour or so, till all the oil drained out. Hooked it back up, turned it on, and sure enough, the hot water heater sounded back to normal. And the refrigerator went back to normal. The, the freezer got down again to single digits and the refrigerator got down to its normal 36, 38 degrees. So everything worked perfect. The problem I have is you can't tell when this is happening and I want to fix that today. So let's take a look at how I'm going to try to make oil in the line visible. Okay, step one, burn off any propane left in the lines. I have the tanks off, so this is just whatever gas was in the line coming from the propane tanks. So I'm just burning it off now, and we'll let it go till it goes out. And there it is. All done. 
Okay, here's my two tanks. Here's the regulator right here in the back. This hose, which is, remember, at the top, going to the regulator, it's about 150 PSI. Coming out of the regulator, it's at only a half a PSI. So next to no pressure, it's just gas flow, which is what you want. So any obstructions in this line, as you see, my hose out of my regulator makes a U, which sort of forms a track. And all that oil puddled up, I think, all this way, and gas was barely making its way through. So my goal is, I want to be able to see if there's oil in there. So I bought this trap that are used on cars after the P PVC valve to trap oil in the lines. So I want to actually take this, cut this hose right at the bottom of its low point, and put this trap in. Okay, first thing I want to do is loosen this line. Ah, let's see if there's any oil in there. There shouldn't be, I just drained it the other day. Oh, I'm not seeing any. Oh, there's a little. See it coming out? You can see. There is oil coming out. That's unbelievable. And I emptied this two days ago. Okay, what you can see is, here's the line coming out of the back of the regulator. Goes down and up and in to my camper. So my plan is I made this piece of aluminum and it has a hole in it that bolts onto this half inch threaded rod. It allows great flexibility, as you can see. I can swing it all over the place. And then this container can swivel too. So we can get it lined up exactly in line with the hose. We can swing it in or out, we can rotate it. So it's very adaptable to get right in line. So what I have to do now is cut the line in the middle and plug it on to these two couplings. All right. Now that looks like a 3 8 inch hose, which is the fittings I have, which is perfect. So, before I hook this up, I want to sort of get this ready. I'm going to put Teflon tape on these threads. I'm also going to put Teflon tape right here. And I'm taking out this filter. Because if you take it and you blow on it, oops, put this on. And you force the gas to go through that little filter, it's a little difficult. And I don't need that. I don't need to filter the gas. I'm taking this out. That's what it looks like inside. Put this back on. Now when I blow on it, easy flow right through. That's what I want. No restrictions. And there is a direction here, so you have to go the right way through this. So let me go Teflon tape this and this, and I'll get back to you. Okay. Here's the trap I'm using. I Teflon taped here and here. And remember, this is only going to see a half a PSI. It's after the regulator, very low, low pressure. And if I need to, I can use this drain to drain the oil if it fills up too much. Or I can take the whole bowl off, either way. Um, what I need to do is now put it in here, get it all adjusted. First thing I have to do... Obviously, 
We turn the gas on and bubble check everything. So let's go get some bubbles. Okay, I'm back with bubbles. Now, let's turn on the gas. Let's do a little bubble checking. Don't see anything there. I do some see some at the bottom here. We have to work on that. Okay, this will be bubble test <laughs> number two. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. And as you can see, it's dripping. I have it all over that. It's dripping down the bowl. Nothing. Nothing coming out of the trap now. I put Teflon tape on the screw. So, perfectly sealed. I think we're good to go. Time for a test. I'm going out this weekend, so we'll see how it goes. Another successful mod. Okay, I've been traveling for about 3,000 miles waiting for some oil to get into the trap so I could show you whether it even works. And lo and behold, there is some there. So let's see if I can get close enough. It's a little bit at the bottom. So I'll turn the camera to it and let's see it. Here's the tanks. There's the trap. Let's see if we can see the bottom there. I don't know if you can see the yellow. See the yellow in there? That is definitely oil in the bottom. So we can definitely tell that the trap is working, which is fantastic. None of that oil got past it and into the rest of the system. Success!